there's no question about the, the influence and the credibility that religious groups, right through from evangelical Protestants and the Wilber forces of this world, right through to the Quakers, this, this was the, the engine, really, if you like, of, of that popular protest that I was talking about earlier today. And I think if we can galvanize that, whether it's in the form of petitions, letter writing, corresponding societies that we talked about later today, I think this is a critical, a critical force and, and one that, that I think politicians will listen to. Frank, do you agree? I do very much. And also, it could be better timed because we're in the last stages in the run-up to a general election, and there are large numbers of members who are in by only a handful of votes, and every letter they receive, they will think, this is part of my maturity, I must appease it. So although from today's debate, the, this is um, in um, early July, in the House of Commons, where a number are clearly wanting to improve this bill, I think a churches-run um, lobby and only they can put on a lobby of this scale, can actually uh, ensure that should the backbenchers' willpower need to be broken, they actually have the means of doing it. Oh, I can see a campaign shaping up. The Garten Institute and the Turkish... And you know, in the 19th century, we talked about this earlier, about um, constituents like, trying to pledge MPs to do, to do things, to vote the way they, they want to. I think this could be something... Yeah, this could be something... We could build on that too. We should do individual letters and also... Yeah that members can, um, can and should present petitions if they're given to them. Yes. So we actually also ensure that we swamp the order paper with 100 members getting up with 100 petitions from the 100 marginal seats, yeah. all vying to make um, the, their point made to the government. It will wreck their business for part of the day <laughs> and make a huge impression. But more importantly, just strengthen the MPs. This may be their last chance to do the right thing. Well, if there has been a real change in mood and they've effectively relayed their opinions to the Prime Minister, he hasn't got the message yet. I think the, the killer point for them to make to him is that they could actually be charged, uh, if they're global players, by uh, using and exploiting slaves in their supply chain. And they will want to have the defence that we fulfilled everything the British government asked us to do in respect to checking uh, our supply chains. That we won't be able to make them free immediately, but all the requirements of British law had been carried out by us. And I think on that business, I mean, they will tell the Prime Minister stuff is red tape argument, but it's, it's, it's minor compared with them being sent to prison.